254 Entertainment Headquarters in the capital city, Nairobi. This conversation is powered by the Hustle Yako Initiative. It's all about youth empowerment and development. And as you know, there's been this trending conversation regarding um, the royalty payments by the MCSK and these other CMOs, man. And uh, it's very interesting that uh, a lot of artists have been complaining on their social media platforms, you know, taking screenshots of their Pesa balance. Kwanza kuna ingine nili tumyo kwa group maze. Yeah, all them will come post a kiss and my combo is kissing me with 2500. Eh, na tati bobby a kutoa. I love a katuma pale balance. Kumbi li kwa ni nil nil mze. Sasa kapata ika kwa balance. New balance ni 2530. Tumi cheka sana. Bawaja ni kumbi maze. Kuna issue moja big ka notorious. Na lazima tuweze kuisungumzi ya history ya do. And uh, to kisungumzi ya story ya do, ndio wasaniyo na peseka. And uh, a lot of artists are complaining about. MCSK and the CMOs and the royalty payments, but I think they're looking at this problem upside down. Now, let's get to the real issue. The real problem is that Kenyan artists are broke. Let's acknowledge that. The majority of Kenyan artists are not making money. So the big question is, why is it that Kenyan artists are not making money? Is it because MCSK is failing to pay them enough royalties? Is that the real reason why Kenyan artists are not making money? I don't think so. You know, royalties may be one challenge. That royalties may not be enough. But who said that royalties are what you need to pay your daily bills or to build your house or to buy you a brand new car? I don't think that's it. I think the problem is with our business model. And I want to just challenge Kenyan artists to understand that this is show business. A lot of times we, we spend time as entertainers focused on the show and we forget the business. There is no show business without the business. You feel me? So you cannot be stunting surely 200,000 Kenyan shillings videos but you're not making that money back. That's a bad business model. Na kuna msi moja anaitu MC Samora li niambia ka Biz, hakuna biz, ah, uza biz You feel me? Get out and do something else That's a challenge to you So, talking about the business model I think we need to understand Where does the money in show business or in entertainment come from? That's the big question You know, there are various ways that an artist can make money So that we stop this ranting and tirades on social media First and foremost, I think the first thing that we need to think about is performances. Artists make the most of the money to touring, to doing gigs, shows, right? So if there are no shows, what does that mean? I think the problem, you know, with this, this format is that corporate Kenya has ceased to invest in the show business. For a long time, we were making money as performing artists because corporate Kenya was sponsoring events or putting together events, you know, as a marketing gimmick or a marketing campaign. Now, you know, shows are not pulling the numbers that they used to pull. That's a big problem. Artists are not really connecting with their fan base enough for somebody to say, on Saturday, I'm going to come to this event, I'm going to pay 1,000 shillings, 500 shillings, 1,500 shillings, whatever amount you want to charge at the game. So that's not happening. So when a corporate entity puts money in an event and they find that that event has 500 people, yet you promise them 5,000 people, they're never going to work with you ever again. Best believe that. In corporate Kenya, there's always a conversation about return on investment, right? So you got to prove that if you do a gig, you're going to pull the numbers and those consumers who come to that event are going to buy that product or buy that service. That's the only reason why corporate Kenya is going to do an event. They're not going to do an event because they like you. They're not going to do an event because they love your music. They're going to do an event because it's going to make financial sense in terms of profit margin to them. So that's one thing you need to understand and take home very seriously. Another reason why corporate Kenya is not investing in this marketing activities like music concerts is because, hey, the economy is doing really badly. You know, let's, let's call it, let's call a spade a spade. So, you know, when, when corporate Kenya is facing uh, that kind of economic challenge, the first budgets that are cut are either HR budgets, where you see a lot of uh, downsizing, and redundancy checks, what one of Tuakazi, Kwa Wingi. Apart from that, another way that they check that is by, you know, cutting budgets like marketing, spending, you know, like expenditures gotta stop, you know, and the CFO comes and says, you know what, we need to stop this, Lazima to cut the easy budget, that's the end we're marketing upon, are you easy? <laughs> so that's what happens, and, and you go, and you, you table your proposal, and it's a great pitch, 
and you can prove all these things that you know yes if you guys sponsor this event you're gonna have the numbers that the companies were here but they're like yo unfortunately we don't have a budget or we're facing budget cuts and we gotta wait for another cycle be it another business year and things like that so the economy is doing really badly and pr and marketing budgets that, that you know the, the events and music industry falls under unfortunately have been interrupted another revenue stream we need to look at as an entertainment industry is is merchandising you know like when is the last time you saw an artist with merchandise that you can buy you know if you're a diehard fan and you love say octo or cali or, or somebody else for that matter and you love him or, or her you know where can you find their t-shirts where can you find their, their hoodies where can you find their bags not many people are thinking like that and i think merchandising is a viable opportunity another viable revenue stream is music sales all right if you can convince your fans who claim they love you so much you know your one million followers on instagram or 500,000 followers on instagram to buy you your cd or to download one of your songs you know say for 100 shillings that's a lot of money if you're 500,000 fans on ig that for sure are not haters for sure are, are, are your diehards and, and, and these are the numbers that you claim to have and you tell your 500,000 followers yo buy one one single my new hit song for 100 shillings just do that mathematics that's 500 times 100 pop. how much is that that's 50 million shillings and you will forever see it from tweeting about mcsk i'm gonna say this you know slash 10 percent from that and just say 50,000 of my fans if 50,000 of my fans download a song for for a dollar you know 99 cents is a global standard that's say 100 shillings you know that's five million pop if 50,000 of your fans do that if you say five five thousand of my fans are gonna buy this 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 one single i'm not talking about an album just one single just 100 bob man say ile ile unaikanga hata siju na nini unaweza buy na soul no no ndura no no kitu kama hiyo no no eh kitu ya soul tu hata uwezi buy pombe na soul unaelewa unless una buy zile zile gangster yani zile masacho ama tudogo yani unaona so if 5000 people buy your single at 100 shillings that's half a million shillings that's the business that you business model that you need to have in my opinion you know what i'm saying all you need is 5000 guys and and you know instead of complaining that maze nearly invest 200k kwa video na hii 200k jarudi mc skim ni 2500 when he falla when he falla sana kama uwezi angalia venye busy na faikue so i'm doing this video just to help you figure out how to turn your career around if you really want to be an, a musician or if you really want to be an entertainer product is king so sell your product so complaining who's ufanya biz boss convince those 5000 people because people got a, a lot of views like i go on youtube and i see artists with with a million views if you really got a million views can't you convince 500 5000 people to buy your single you know what i'm saying are those views legit <laughs> you know what i'm saying like come on if you got five, five, one million views you can sell five thousand singles that's how i look at it i just want to talk to these guys complaining that you know mcsk only sent us 2500 in october sour. <laughs> but you know you're the same person who charges 10k for an appearance or 20k for a gig you've already set your your standard low people already know that to get you on a gig all they need is 20 g's now pia kuna wasani kualita kwa show wanaisha tu lunch dishi kuna wasani wengine wanaisha tu pombe bora kuna mzinga mina kama na kula show so oh hapo ndo umejiweka kama msani that's the value of your brand ngiri kumi ama free eh ndo unekane tu chukwe self uniko backstage backstage unachocha don't you follow Ghani, Maze? So I think the first problem is artists have been selling themselves short. My nigga, we've been building brands for years. Like, I've done 15 years. Like, taking my rate card from zero to where it is today. You feel me? And somebody comes and is charging, what, less than... I don't even know, like... Less than... Like a, like a tenth of that rate. So what are we doing to our own industry? I think as artists, as entertainers, we are our downfall. We are our own stumbling blocks, right? We're the ones who showed 
you know, our clients be the, be the corporate companies or the NGOs or the government bodies or, or even the, the promoters themselves that we are worthless. By the time you don't demand your worth as an artist and you take any crap somebody puts on your table, you devalue your brand for the rest of your life. And the industry is this small, so everybody talks. Like we know everybody's weak. We know what everybody is being paid. All those people standing on the ground, you know what I'm saying? You know, bowling. You ain't making money, homie. If you were making money, the 25, 30 wouldn't be anything worth your time to talk about. And that's fine. You gonna hate me for it? I don't give a fuck. But 25, 30? I tweet about 2,500 shillings as a Kenyan entertainer. You got your whole business model upside down, my nigga. You ain't making money. So you need to think about why is 2,500 shillings so painful to me? It's because you ain't making anything else. So you need to reevaluate your branding. You need to evaluate how you how you position yourself. I need to, you need to reevaluate your rate card. Let people say you're expensive. But give them value. You know what I'm saying? You cannot have an artist charging 10,000 shillings, yet you're an A-lister with a million views. That's total bullshit, my nigga. That's total bullshit. So you got yourself a blade. You hear me? Folks, my final rant is about artists thinking that royalty checks, royalty payments <laughs> are going to buy you houses, are going to buy you cars. It was never, it's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. Believe me, I can bet any amount of money you wanna bet right now, it's never gonna happen. Whether we reevaluate MCSK or the CMOs for that matter, or we, we, like I've seen people say like, let's get the artists to manage themselves. All right, we can do that. For information, most of the board members are artists anyway. <laughs> you feel me? It's either composers or, or performers or actors that sit on those boards bro, or producers for that matter. So don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted, man. Like, royalty checks will never buy you a house. Royalty checks will never buy you a car. All right? You need to invest in your brand. You need to monetize your brand. And if, if you're smart and you invest wisely and you save your money instead of turning up and, and, and taking shorties on holidays and starting to, to make your boys know that you are G, my nigga, you can buy that car. You can buy that house. You can stop renting. Okay? You can stop fundraising when you're sick. Okay? And and, and these things are painful because, you know, Uliye Vuma, Gie, Ambayo Nateseka. And, you know, it's shameful for somebody who had uh, such an illustrious career, and, you know, who had such a big brand and was, was, was so popular, you know, ending up in that kind of way because of the decisions you made. So I think we need to evaluate ourselves as, as entertainers and we need a plan. You know, if you don't, you know, prepare well, if you don't plan well, then you're preparing to fail. You know, you fail the plan, you're planning to fail. Just keeping it 100 with you, y'all. That's what Hustle Yak is all about, youth empowerment and development. You know, nobody taught us these things. We learned the hard way. So I'm here giving you that wisdom. Take it, use it well. And take your hustle to the next level. One love, two five four, down.